The drums were pounding again, pounding and pounding and pounding. Daisy Mormont, who seemed to be the only woman left in the hall besides Catelyn, stepped up beside Edwin Frey and touched him lightly on the arm as she said something in his ear. Edwin wrenched away from her with unseemly violence. No, he said too loudly. I'm done with dancing for the nuts. Daisy paled and turned away. Catelyn got slowly to her feet. What just happened there? Doubt gripped her heart, where an instant before there had only been weariness. It is nothing, she tried to tell herself. You are seeing gremlins in the woodpile. You are becoming an old, silly woman, sick with grief and fear. But something must have shown in her face. Even Sir Wendell Mandley took note. Is something amiss? he asked, the leg of lamb in his hands. She did not answer him. Instead, she went after Edwin Frey. The players in the gallery had finally gotten both king and queen down to their name-day suits. With scarcely a moment's respite, they began to play a very different sort of song. No one sang the words, but Catelyn knew the reins of Castamere when she heard it. Edwin was hurrying toward a door. She hurried faster, driven by the music. Six quick strides, and she caught him. And who are you, the proud lord said, that I must bow so low. She grabbed Edwin by the arm to turn him, and went cold all over when she felt the iron rings beneath his silken sleeve. Catelyn slapped him so hard she broke his lip. Oliver, she thought, and Perwin, Alessander, all absent, and Rosalind wept. Edwin Frey shoved her aside. The music drowned all other sound, echoing off the walls as if the stones themselves were playing. Rob gave Edwin an angry look and moved to block his way, and staggered suddenly as a quarrel sprouted from his side just below the shoulder. If he'd screamed then, the sound was swallowed by the pipes and horns and fiddles. Catelyn saw a second bolt pierce his leg, saw him fall. Up in the gallery, half the musicians had crossbows in their hands instead of drums or lutes. She ran toward her son until something punched him in the small of her back and the hearthstone floor came up to slap her. Robbed, she screamed. She saw small John Umber wrestle a table off his trestles. Crossbow bolts thudded into the wood. One, two, three, as he flung it down on top of his king. Robin Flint was ringed by Frey's, their daggers rising and falling. Sir Wendell Mandalay rose ponderously to his feet, holding his leg of lamb. A quarrel went in his open mouth and came out the back of his neck. Sir Wendell crashed forward, knocking the table off its trestles and sending cups, flagons, trenchers, platters, turnips, beets and wine bouncing, spilling and sliding across the floor. Catelyn's back was on fire. I have to reach him. The small John bludgeoned Sir Raymond Frey across the face with a leg of mutton. But when he reached for his sword belt, a crossbow bolt drove him down to his knees. In a coat of gold, or a coat of red, a lion still has claws. She saw Lucas Blackwood cut down by Sir Hustin Frey. One of the Vances was hamstrung by Black Walder as he was wrestling with Sir Harry's Hague. And mine are long and sharp, my lord, as long and sharp as yours. The crossbows took Donald Locke Owen Norrie, and half a dozen more. Young Sir Benfrey had seized Daisy Mormont by the arm, but Catelyn saw her grab up a flagon of wine with her other hand and smash it full in his face and run for the door. It flew open before she reached it. Sir Ryman Frey pushed into the hall, clad in steel from helm to heel. A dozen Frey men-at-arms packed the door behind him. They were armed with heavy long axes. Mercy! Catelyn cried, but horns and drums and the clash of steel smothered her plea. Sir Raymond buried the head of his axe in Daisy's stomach. By then men were pouring in the other doors as well, mailed men in shaggy fur cloaks with steel in their hands, north men. She took them for a rescue for half a heartbeat, till one of them struck the small John's head off with two huge blows of his axe. Hope blew out like a candle in a storm. In the midst of slaughter, the Lord of the Crossing sat on his carved oaken throne, watching greedily. 
There was a dagger on the floor a few feet away. Perhaps it had skittered there when the small John knocked the table off his trestles, or perhaps it had fallen from the hand of some dying man. Catelyn crawled toward it. Her limbs were leaden, and the taste of blood was in her mouth. I will kill Walter Frey, she told herself. Jingle Bell was closer to the knife, hiding under a table, but he only cringed away as she snatched up the blade. I will kill the old man. I can do that much at least. Then the tabletop that the small John had flung over Rob shifted, and her son struggled to his knees. He had an arrow in his side, a second in his leg, a third through his chest. Lord Waldo raised a hand, and the music stopped, all but one drum. Catelyn heard the crash of distant battle, and closer, the wild howling of a wolf. Grey wind, she remembered too late. <laughs> Lord Walder cackled at Rob. The king in the north arises. <laughs> Seems we killed some of your men, your grace. Oh, but I'll make you an apology. <laughs> that will mend them all again, eh? <laughs> Catelyn grabbed a handful of Jingle Bell Frey's long grey hair and dragged him out of his hiding place. Lord Walder, she shouted, Lord Walder. The drum beat slow and sonorous. Doom, boom, doom. Enough, said Catelyn. Enough, I say. You have repaid betrayal with betrayal. Let it in. When she pressed the dagger to Jingle Bell's throat, the memory of Bran's sick room came back to her with a feel of steel at her own throat. The drum went boom, doom, boom, doom, boom, doom. Please, she said. He is my son, my first son and my last. Let him go, let him go, and I swear we will forget this, forget all you've done here. I swear it by all the old gods and you. We, we will take no vengeance. Lord Walder peered at her in mistrust. Only a fool would believe such blather, eh? Did take me for a fool, my lady, eh? <laughs> I take you for a father. Keep me for a hostage. Edmure as well, if you haven't killed him. But let Rob go. No. Rob's voice was whisper faint. Mother, no. Yes, Rob, get up. Get up and walk out. Please, please, save yourself. If not for me, for Jane. Jane? Rob grabbed at the edge of the table and forced himself to stand. Mother, he said, grey wind, go to him. Now, Rob, walk out of here. Lord Walder snorted. And why would I let him do that, eh? <laughs> she pressed the blade deeper into Jingle Bell's throat. The lequid rolled his eyes at her in mute appeal. A foul stench assailed her nose, but she paid it no more mind than she did the sullen, ceaseless pounding of that drum. Boom, doom, boom, doom, boom, doom. Sir Ryman and Black Walder were circling round her back, but Catelyn did not care. They could do as they wished with her, imprison her, rape her, kill her, it made no matter. She had lived too long, and Ned was waiting. It was Rob she feared for. On my honour as a Tully, she told Lord Walder, on my honour as a Stark, I will trade your boy's life for Rob's, a son for a son. Her hand shook so badly, she was wringing Jingle Bell's head. Boom, the drum sounded. Boom, doom, boom, doom. The old man's lips went in and out. The knife trembled in Catelyn's hand, slippery with sweat. A son for a son, eh? He repeated. Well, that's a grandson. <laughs> and he was never much use. <laughs> A man in dark armor and a pale pink cloak, spotted with blood, stepped up to Rob. Jamie Lannister sends his regards. He thrust his longsword through her son's heart and twisted. Rob had broken his word, but Catelyn kept hers. She tugged hard on Egan's hair and soared at his neck until the blade grated on bone. Blood ran hot over her fingers. 
His little bells were ringing, 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 and the drum went boom, doom, boom. Finally, someone took the knife away from her. The tears burned like vinegar as they ran down her cheeks. Ten fierce ravens were raking her face with sharp talons and tearing off strips of flesh, leaving deep furrows that ran red with blood. She could taste it on her lips. It hurt so much, she thought. Our children, Ned, all our sweet babes, Rickon, Bran, Aria, Sansa, Rob, Rob, please, Ned, please, make it stop, make it stop hurting. The white tears and the red ones ran together until her face was torn and tattered, the face that Ned had loved. Catelyn Stark raised her hands and watched the blood run down her long fingers over her wrists beneath the sleeves of her gown. Slow red worms crawled along her arms and under her clothes. It tickles. That made her laugh until she screamed. Mad, someone said. She's lost her wits. And someone else said, make an end. And a hand grabbed her scalp, just as she'd done with Jingle Bell. And she thought, no, don't. Don't cut my hair. Ned loves my hair. Then the steel was at her throat, and its bite was red and cold. <laughs>